Yes, Sasha and Naomi. Where to begin on this story? Well, yesterday on Observer Live, I guess we started the beginning, right? Isn't that how we always start? Yesterday, Observer Live, I had the lineup for uh, Raw, which was, of course, non-existent as always. We knew that Omos was going to face Bobby Lashley in a cage match, and uh, that was it by the time the show went off the air. And this show went off the air at, uh, you know, 3 Eastern. The show starts at 8 or whatever. So uh, in the afternoon, they, I guess, announced, I presume on social media, I'm not much of a social media guy, to be honest. Then they were going to be doing a six-pack challenge, and the winner was going to get Bianca Belair at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, which is, quite frankly, a total throwaway pay-per-view. I think the main event is Cody and Seth Rollins for the third time with nothing on the line, just a Hell in a Cell match. And uh, so they had a six-pack challenge announced, and Nikki Ash and Dewdrop and Becky Lynch, and Asuka, and Sasha, and Naomi, who, by the way, are the women's tag team champions. They are all going to be in this in this match, okay? So uh, what happened was there was a disagreement between Vince McMahon and Sasha Banks. We'll go into more details here in a while, but they had a disagreement, and uh, Sasha and Naomi left. They left the building. And this happened as the show was on the air, okay? So about 45 minutes into the show, it was like before a commercial break, they cut backstage, and Adam Pierce is furiously uh, texting on his phone, and uh, Becky is there, and you just hear Becky say something like, I saw them. They put their belts on the desk, and they just walked out, and then we go to commercial. And we come back, and essentially... They shot a very quick angle where Becky explains that she she saw Sasha and Naomi put their belts on the desk and walk out. And so, therefore, there can't be a six-pack challenge. And so she wants to just be named the number one contender. And Adam Pierce ends up ruling, well, it's going to be you and Asuka one-on-one. And the winner gets Bianca Belair. I don't know this 100%, but the impression I've been given is that neither of them actually had any idea what was really going on and they were just told go in there and do this quick and so they went in there and they did it and uh allegedly you know becky just on the fly came up with okay well let's just do this now why in storyline if sasha and naomi walked out they didn't just make it a four-way they took dewdrop and nikki ash out as well i don't know but my presumption is that they figured okay Well, they only have two hours to prepare for this six-minute match, and uh, we'll just have, you know, two good workers that we know can pull it off in six minutes go out there and and do it. Plus, they've been working on the road, so apparently that's why Nikki Ash and and Dewdrop ended up not in the match. So they left, and uh, WWE then issued a statement during Raw, okay? I was going to have Fauntleroy read it, But we'll be serious here, as serious as we can be for this preposterous story. I'll read it, and then maybe Fauntleroy can read it later. When Sasha Banks and Naomi... This is written... This is from WWE. When Sasha Banks and Naomi arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE head of talent relations John Laurinaitis's office with their suitcases in hand, placed their tag team championship belts on his desk, and walked out. They claimed they were not respected enough as tag team champions. And even though they had eight hours, even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past, with no consequence. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret... I'm going to try and say this with a straight face. We regret we were unable to deliver, as advertised, tonight's main event. That's what they said. So, we got a couple of notes here. Uh, th- there, there was a uh, big article at PW Insider 
which uh, largely jives with everything that I heard. And so I'm going to read that here, and then we will uh, we'll talk about more stuff that I heard. So uh, details still light regarding exactly what happened. This is actually from WrestlingObserver.com. The source is PW Insider. What caused Sasha Banks and Naomi to walk out of Raw Monday? One Tuesday report has a version of what led to WWE's Tag Team Champions leaving. According to PW Insider... The plan for Raw was that Banks and Naomi would go head-to-head in the planned six-pack challenge, with Naomi getting to challenge Raw women's champion Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell. The report went on to say there is a belief this Friday's SmackDown would kick off an angle to set up Banks versus SmackDown women's champion Ronda Rousey at Hell in a Cell, with both Banks and Naomi losing at the event. A pitched alternative idea including Dewdrop and Nikki Ash that would have set up a different program was not gone with, leading to the two eventually informing John Laurinaitis they were leaving and handing over the titles. On the post-Raw Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said the two went to Vince McMahon about the creative plan. Vince did not back down, did not agree to what they were asking. The report said McMahon learned of their departure reportedly right as Raw was going live with the eventual Becky Lynch-Adam Pearce segment pitched and approved on the spot, which led to the Lynch versus Asuka match. So... Uh, PW Insider writes, The belief among some is that the creative issue was not with Banks losing to Naomi, but how the uh, duo would have been portrayed over the next several weeks, especially after they had put so much time into building their team once Vince McMahon issued an edict that they would be teaming and winning the women's tag team titles at WrestleMania 38. And then after diving into building that team, they were going to wrestle each other and go off to put over other talents, leaving them exactly where, which apparently was the crux of the issue, I guess back where they started. The uh, WWE plan looks to have been the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions would have been downplayed until their next program after Hell in a Cell. And uh, uh, Wade Keller refuted the statement about not trusting their opponent, saying, I can just say I have asked around. There wasn't a pre-existing issue with Naomi and Sasha and anyone in that match. He also said there was not much sympathy backstage towards either woman, nor a sense of them taking a stand for something people agreed with. And uh, as of now, both women still on the active roster. So, I did hear that story that uh, Naomi was supposed to win the six-pack challenge. Naomi was going to go on to Hell in a Cell. Sasha Banks was going to do a feud with Ronda Rousey and have a championship match at Hell in a Cell. So both of the tag team champions would be challenging for the singles titles, And they would lose. And uh, this apparently upset Sasha and Naomi because they have done such a great job in their minds of building their team up since winning the titles at WrestleMania. If you're watching the video right now and you're looking at my face, yes, I find this whole thing to be completely preposterous. Do they not remember back in the day where when you were going to build up a champion, that that person beat the tag team champions one on two, literally in a handicap match. The tag team champions would often do jobs for the champion. I mean, I I understand, like, uh, you know, being happy to win the titles at Mania and everything. But uh, what's going on here? You've built up this team to such a degree that you can't do a job to the singles champions at Hell in a Cell. Have I been watching a different Raw and SmackDown where Sasha Banks and Naomi are this huge, uh, popular, fantastically over main event tag team act? Have I missed that aspect of the television? Because when I watch the show, they're the women's tag team champions. And they're getting the same pops they got before. Uh, the belts are exactly positioned largely as they're... Uh, I mean, I got a lot more to say after this, after the break, but I don't got a lot of sympathy. And I think one of the keys to this story is, bro, I ain't the only one that has no sympathy. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Old yeah. Excalibur. We've got heat with him. <laughs> I was clearly joking when I said they sped up his voice. I had nothing to do with this, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> Oh, now you have to apologize. His name is not Excalibur. His first name isn't Xavier. I like Excalibur. He used to be a caliber. If anything ever happens, like AEW goes under or whatever, you know they always have those those uh, those commercials about drugs, and they have that guy that reads the list of side effects. Yes, one out there. It's potentially lethal taint fungus. (laughs) That'd certainly be bad. I am not exaggerating that at all. (laughs) My point is, is, I will never take this drug under any circumstances. (laughs) 
potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> Lol. Lol. I hate him. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.